Okay, so we'll start this example with a D bar chord, and that'll be at the fifth and seventh frets. Our first finger is on the note D, and that's on the A string at the fifth fret. And our third finger will bar across the notes A, D, and F sharp at the seventh fret. So I'm also slightly arpeggiating that with my picking hand, and by that I mean just playing the notes of the chord individually rather than strumming them all at once or plucking them at once. So if you're a classical player, I'm using P, I, M, A. Just a little bit of a nice arpeggiation there. Uh, if you're not a classical player, thumb, index, middle, ring. Okay, so that's a D chord to start us off. From there, I'm going to a B minor chord. And B minor will play the note B at the seventh fret on the sixth string, F sharp, A, and D. Just those uh, four strings, so low E, A, D, and G string. We're not going to play the full form on this. Okay, so just getting those lower notes in there. From there, we'll kind of stay in the same shape, but what we'll do is a Mayfield-inspired fill. Our index finger will grab the note A on the D string, and then what we'll do from there is kind of bar our first finger across the seventh fret um, on the notes D and F sharp. Grab those, hammer on from seven to nine on the G string, and then resolve to the note B on the D string. So it's a nice move. You've probably heard Hendrix play that and countless other guitar players too, but I think the origins probably come from Mayfield, so um, it's a really cool Mayfield-esque type move. Let's recap what we've got so far. So we've got a D chord going to B minor, and then this fill, which is nice. From there, We'll hammer on, uh, I'm going to use my third finger at the ninth fret on the A string. That's the note F sharp. We're going to hammer on from our third finger to pinky at the tenth fret to G. And then we'll hold that out with our index finger at the seventh fret, grabbing the notes A and D. So we have a nice suspended chord sound. And then we'll hammer that on. Let me, let me play that a little cleaner there. So that's a nice move also uh, from the Curtis Mayfield playbook there. So that's really nice. And again, I'm plucking with the fingers of my picking hand, arpeggiating that, and then doing a little bit of plucking and arpeggiation too. And he would kind of move that around. He doesn't do those things the same way all the time. Um, you can hear him manipulating that stuff. So feel free to do what you wish with that. All right, so from D to B minor. Sus, resolving. From there, I'm going to hold that form out. So it's F sharp, A, D. And what I'm going to do with my right hand is I'll go an octave higher and I'll pluck the harmonic. So I'm all the way, I'm way up high on the neck, an octave higher from this F sharp. And what I'm doing is I'm t barely touching the top of the fret with my index finger and plucking behind it with my thumb to get the harmonic. And then from there, I lightly tap the rest of the chord form. And that'll be um, at the 19th fret. So 21st fret, harmonic on the A string and then a light tap to get the chord um, at the 19th fret, okay? So, it's a really nice move there. From there, we'll go to an F sharp minor seven chord, and this is at the ninth fret on the A string, nine, 11, nine, 10. So we've got F sharp, we've got a C sharp, we've got an E and an A. And Mayfield liked to do these kind of uh, little moves around the chord shapes 
where he does some pulls and hammer-ons and things like that. So that's something else you could do there too. So I'm hammering on from A and then resolving it to that F sharp, all while arpeggiating the chord with my picking hand. We'll take this same shape, F sharp minor, and move it down to the second fret to B minor. And we'll essentially do the same move there. So, And then pull off. We'll hammer first from D to E on the B string. Back down. And this is a hammer on from A to B, back down to A, and then resolving to F sharp. And then we grab a really nice chord here, which is a G over A, or G slash A. And that's a G triad with A in the bass. And the way that I'm fingering this is I have my third finger of my fretting hand on the low note A at the fifth fret, my pinky on G at the fifth fret on the D string, middle finger on B, which is the fourth fret of the G string, and then I'm grabbing D with my first finger, third fret of the B string. Really pretty chord. And then resolving from there back to D. So we'll have all of that. You can even tap the harmonic by itself if you want, which is nice to do. So to finish off the second time, we'll do a really nice gospel-inspired move here. What I'm doing is I have the note G at the fifth fret, B at the fourth fret, and E at the fifth fret on the B string. I'm using my third finger, middle finger, and pinky here. And the reason why I'm sliding into that, I'm going to pull off with my pinky from the note E down to D. So that's why I'm kind of playing this chord form with these fingers so that I can pull off there and then be set up for the last chord, which is a inverted D chord. So again, kind of sliding into this chord shape here. Um, you could think of this as a G6 shape. You have G, B, and E. Sliding into that from a half step below. Pulling off down to D, which is a G triad now. Back down to G6. And then resolving to a D triad. So this is F sharp, A, and D. I should also mention that actually, now that I think about it, this move here, this G, B, and uh, E, um, it is kind of a G6 shape, but it's got A in the bass at this point, which makes it an A9 sound, A dominant nine. So that's our resolution there. Altogether, this is the second half of the thing. And that's it. So there it is, Curtis Mayfield. Awesome.